Good morning, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get our program started for today. I'm Rose Falberg, a member of the Birmingham Optimist Club and the chairperson for the 28th, believe that, 28 years, the Larry Raymond Speech Oratorical event. On behalf of the Birmingham Optimist Club, I'm pleased to welcome all of you, all of the participants today, your families, guests, as well as classroom teachers and administrators. So thank you very much for being here. We're very excited to have this program today. I would also like to thank our sponsors for their generous donation for today's event. If, if you could please stand when I call your name, I would greatly appreciate that. Jim and Barb Hayes, Tom and Cindy Longeway, Bill and Carol McConnell, Bob and Ann Parker, Ed and Sharon Pugh, Tom and Tina Rowley with Home Instead, Richard and Kathy Stasis, Bob and Mary Lee Stossel, Kathleen and Roger Tilson, David and Janice Walker, as well as the Birmingham Optimist Club Foundation through the Kids Campaign Program. Thank you. So today we have some special guests that I'd love to announce. Um, first of all, we have Tom Longeway, who's twice past president of the Birmingham Optimist Club, past Michigan District Optimist Secretary, a treasurer, and current assistant governor of Michigan District. So Tom's here with us if you want to stand. Oh, oh, he's not here, but his wife will stand for him. <laughs> and is Ray Finocchio here today? Okay, all righty, okay. So. Um, I would also like to give a special thank you to the speech and language pathologists of the Birmingham Public Schools. They provide services for all the children in the Birmingham Public Schools and private schools. These teachers have helped prepare their students for today's event and I would like to recognize them. Again, if you could stay when I call your name. Emily Dumitrisco, Anna Soberal, Amy Briggs, Allison Roy, Emmy Lou Garza Prisby, Carrie Henderson, Megan Jacobs, Paula Schatzman, and Beverly Hannah Price. So thank you for everything you have done. As well as today, I'd like to thank uh, some other special people for coming today and taking time out to be here to support uh, this event. Um, Joe Hoffman, who's the Assistant Superintendent for Instruction with Birmingham Public Schools. He's also a Birmingham Optimist member. Mark DeJack, Superintendent for the Birmingham Public Schools, has attended. Thank you. Laura Muller, Director of Special Education. It's great to have you here. Also, I'd like to thank Alan Ledford up above here. He's from the Birmingham Public Schools media producer, and video specialist. He'll do our recording services today. And don't forget, you can view this event on YouTube. So look in the inside of your program. There's directions on how to get to this video. We'll give them a little bit of time, maybe a week to get it posted. It usually takes a little bit of time. So we'd love to thank him for being here. Um, also, a special thanks to the Community House because they always do such a great job for us. And particularly Greg, who's worked with me, I think, almost all of the 28 years. <laughs> That's always my last question. Is Greg going to be there? <laughs> so anyway, um, we're very excited about all of that. Um, at this time, I'd like to introduce David Hesseltine with the Birmingham Optimist Club to give us this morning's invocation. Thank you, Rose. My name is David Hustletine. I'm the pastor of the Franklin Community Church, and I've been in ministry for 32 years, and even on Sunday mornings when I stand up in front of my congregation, I still get butterflies <laughs> in my stomach, so I can uh, feel for what our speakers are going through today, but know that all of us together are for you and supporting you, and we're there for you. But let's have a word of prayer. Oh, grace Lord, we thank you for this new day. Thank you for all the blessings you give to our lives. We thank you for the optimists and the good work they do in our community and especially for this event, this special oratorical. So we thank you for the students that are about to come up and share their speeches. We know that a lot of work went into these speeches and maybe there's a little bit of nerves. So just 
bring a sense of calm to our speakers. Well, we thank you for parents and speech pathologists and others that helped our students get to this point and will continue to journey with them in their lives. But this is a special day in life of our club and we're thankful for it. So these prayers we lift to you in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, David. At this point, um, Bill McConnell, the Birmingham Optimist Club president, will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I also wanted to thank Eleanor Ralston today for taking all of our pictures, so thank you, Eleanor. I'm proud to announce today that we have 13 students participating. We have two divisions in this event, the senior division, which includes middle school and high school students, and the junior division, which includes elementary school students. The topic for this year's event is, is there a fine line between optimism and reality? This was the assigned topic for this morning's event. Each student will speak two to three minutes on the topic of their thoughts on this particular uh, topic we have this year. As with our, I already told you, if, if you don't want your child photograph or videotape, then just let me know, because we'll be starting that now. Um, I know everyone's put a lot of hard work and time in their presentations, and we're eager to hear them. So our, our first presenter today will be um, Pene Posey. Panaya Posey, and she's um, going to have to leave a little bit early, so we're going to put her up front first. And so, do you have her speech right here? Um, I have it out front. Did you need it? I think she'd like it. Up okay, C Cindy will grab it real quick. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so you come on up. The glass of water analogy is commonly used to express the difference between optimism and the reality. The optimist believes the glass is half full, while the realist just simply impl implies it's nothing but a glass of water. Both the optimist and the realist are correct because the analogy depends on the perspective of the beholder. The perspective can be viewed as siblings. Siblings have always have the tendency to want to be right whenever arguing over something, even if it's minuscule. Optimism and reality are the unlikely pair of siblings who just happen to be related. Optimism is always zealous. Reality is completely paradoxical and never sugarcoats anything. Yet, reality will never know what it's like to always have positivity. Reality will also never know optimism's ability to have hope, courage, and resilience in vigorous situations. Optimism will never know how it feels to carry the burden of seeing things for how they were meant to be. No other options exist except for the long, harsh truth of things. They may never know what it's like to be the other, but they can always step past their boundaries to hope each other. Reality keeps optimism from pursuing any reckless ambitions. Meanwhile, optimism hopes to give reality a greater outlook of all the possibilities before selling for something less. Thus, reality and optimism can both see the possible outcomes of a situation. Either good or bad, both insights are vital. Although optimism and reality are a very unlikely pair, they embody two very real aspects in life. Each and every one of us has or will experience at some point in life optimism and reality. 
We may be more optimistic like optimism whenever all the odds are against us or others. In some occurrences, we may need to be more realistic. We may be realistic to make more cautious decisions. Optimism in reality helps us grow as people to become wiser and more knowledgeable. When we look back, we can always find that our optimistic or realist views have taken us to greater heights, or our experience has helped us learn that this time around, maybe a bit more of an optimistic or realistic view might do the trick. There is no line as they coexist. Now, uh, I have a side note to include as well. Through my 16 revolutions around the sun, I've needed both optimism and realistic views, especially when it came to my hearing impairment. I still remember the very day and days when I was fit for my first pair of hearing aids. And even my speech therapy sessions. At the time, I took speech lessons as the place where, where I received cool stickers and can miss out on math lessons. Eventually, my speech became better and speech therapy was no longer. As I got older, I started feeling embarrassed that I had to wear hearing aids and give a microphone to teachers. I would avoid at all costs trading out my home hearing aids for my school pair. Some days I would even wish I didn't have hearing aids. Today my views are different. My hearing devices aren't holding me back from anything at all. Instead, they are part of my reality and they are part of me. If there is one thing as an audience to take away from this speech is this. Don't fear your reality. Instead, be optimistic that you will grow to change your view of your reality for the better and for the future. Thank you. Thank you, Maya. I know that um, you have some commitments. You have to leave a little bit early. So Bill and I wanted to make sure that you got a certificate and the medals and to say thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Sonia, uh, Sonia Baldwin from Beverly Elementary. school. I will be talking about is there a fine line between right and wrong. When I think about the friendship in my experience at school, I would say yes, there is a fine line between right and wrong. Every person should think to themselves, would this hurt someone? That person should be, that, that question should be our, our guide in life. It should be simple, but sometimes it's not. We all need friends. Friendship is a bond between two or more people. Friends help us build our confidence. They bring us hope, make us cheerful and happy. Sometimes friends do and say things they do not mean. They might not realize they are hurting your feelings or making you sad. True friends will apologize and learn to forgive each other. The sadness is only temporary. It is important to forgive because we all make mistakes. Friends are there for you in good times and bad times. When you are sad, friends will put themselves in your shoes and try and help. When you are kind to others, you will make new friends. I, I have all different kinds of friends from school, from my cottage, and from church. Without kindness and friendship, the world is a very lonely place. I think that we're not meant to be alone. Friends will sometimes disappoint you, but I try and forgive them. Nobody is perfect. I hope you enjoyed my speech about the reality of friendship. Thank you. And I want to thank my teachers for helping me with my speech.
Thank you, Sana. That's very good. Thank you. Okay, our next speaker, um, I was not able to get her in the program, but her name is Mary, Mariana Unchi, and she's from Bingham Barnes Elementary. Optimism is a very big and important word that needs a lot. It means believing in yourself that good things will happen to you. Reality means a lot. It means how things are today. Right now, I'm a student. I am sorry. One day, my dream is to work at Soy. Is to work at Sawyer's Chips and Salsa. I will be the boss. <laughs> my restaurant will be having like steak and chips and salsa. They have fries and a salad and mints. They also have milkshakes like vanilla milkshake, cherry milkshake, and a chocolate milkshake. The customers will be coming to Sawyer's Chips and Salsa. I will be the boss in my office. I will wear a fancy black suit and a red tie. John, Eli, Joshua, Ben, and Drew will be the workers for me. They will be hired. When the day is done, all the customers will go home and get some shut eye. <laughs> oh, I believe I can be the boss in of uh, Sawyer's chips and sauce. It's important to believe in yourself because it ha helps you think and dream. It helps you make a good life and being a great boss. The end. Thank you, Sawyer. Our next speaker is Eli Gatch with um, West Maple Elementary.
Have you ever imagined something good and you made it happen? That's called having a growth mindset, and I'm here to talk about it. Hello, my name is Eli. I'm a fourth grader at West Maple Elementary. Today, we will be talking about optimism versus reality. In school, we learned about growth mindsets and it, how if you think positive, good things will come back to you. You have to be optimistic to have a growth mindset. If you choose to be positive, aka have a growth mindset, your dreams will come true and become your reality. In third grade, I wanted to read the Harry Potter series, but it was a really big book and I didn't think I could do it. But I did it and now I love the series. I decided to be optimistic and try my best. I, if I wouldn't have thought positive, I would have never read the series. My life would not be complete because I'm a Potterhead. Another way I use the growth a growth mindset is with my fine motor and sensory processing disorders. It's tough for me to do some things like tying my shoes, putting on socks, and handwriting. I also have trouble with things that have a lot of movement, lights, sounds, and heights, so places like amusement parks, movie theaters, concerts, and big places can be scary and stressful. When I went to Epcot, there was a ride that we fast passed that I wasn't really sure about. The ride was a 40 special effects that called Soren where you go around the world. I was scared about it, so I wasn't sure I wanted to go on it. My family encouraged me to give it a try. I thought po if I didn't like it, I wouldn't go on it again. I thought positive and decided to go on it, and I ended up loving it. Even though these things can be maybe uncomfortable or stressful, I have found ways to help to help put me push forward and experience new things with a positive attitude. At Sunday school, I have a helper named Sophie that helps me get work done. She's a senior in high school, about to graduate high school. Sometimes she babysits for me and my brother Avery. We make cringy iMovies together where we go to Somerset or Trail Oaks and make iMovies where we pretend that we're, we are stuck in a villain by an evil mom. And the only way to unlock it is with a lost bath bomb, a chicken nugget, it's offensive to her because he's vegan, and a french fry. At the Quorum Carnival this year, there's a laser bluff activity. I didn't want to go on it because it was dark and I don't like lasers, but she encouraged me and I did it. She helped me believe in myself. Another example of sewing a growth mindset happened this year. My school did Susical Kids. It's the elementary version of Susical the Musical. I was really pumped that I got casted. Last year I listened for the musical, but I didn't get the part. I could have decided not to try out and give it up of my dream being in the musical and being an actor, but I chose to be, think positive, believe in myself, and practice hard for the audition. I was really scared when I went to the callbacks because I thought I didn't make it, but I was so happy when they said that everyone there made it. The directors gave me a lot of info and direction, which was hard to take in all at once, but I took notes and eventually memorized the dances, lyrics, and my lines. I'm so glad I was optimistic so that I could achieve my goal and make it a reality. Being optimistic can make your dreams come true. It takes a lot of effort. When I say thinking optimistically, I don't mean just thinking it. I mean doing it with effort, time, and belief. If you think about what you want in life, that is not enough. You have to live it. Also, it's important to have positive people to support me and encourage me to push myself. Otherwise, it's hard to be optimistic without them. Some of the people that have supported me throughout my life include Sophie from Sunday School, Sarah from Friendship Circle, Miss Manning, Miss Steger, and Mr. Haynes, the directors of Susical Kids, and all of my best maple teachers, my friends Beth, Sage, Charlize, Ashley, Jonah, Abby M, and Abby C, my parents, brother, and family. I think the world would be a better place if everyone was optimistic. If you encounter something hard in your life, you might like it if you just give it a try. It's okay to not know, but it's not okay to not try. I think you've been a really nice audience. <laughs>
Good morning, everyone. My name is Abby Glazer, and I am 10 years old and in the fourth grade. I attend Corton Elementary School. I live with my mom, dad, and my two older brothers, and I also have a Bernadoodle puppy. I started speech therapy in kindergarten, working on my vowels, A's, O's, L's, and L's, L blends, K's, and G's in words and in sentences. Currently, I have been working on saying R's in words, sentences, and in my conversations. I have been working and trying to get all my letters and sounds correct while working on my homework. I used to have speech homework once a week, but now I am just working on carrying over my R's with when I talk out loud right now. I work with Miss Prisby once a week in speech. I think all my hard work is paying off. In high school, I would like to be on the cheerleading or dance team. I really enjoy to re read and write in school. In the future, I would like to become either a nurse or a teacher or an anesthesiologist like my dad. I would like to attend the University of Michigan for college. I would like to drive a, drive a white or purple light Jeep. <laughs> I want to live near a beach because I like to play and go over waves in the ocean. I want to live in a big house with a swimming pool. I also want my own puppy dog. What I am optimistic about. I believe people are killing rhinos for their ivory horns and that needs to stop. Endangered animals need to be protected on our planet. More laws need to be written not to kill animals in the wild. I am optimistic that one day in the future, humans will stop killing end endangered animals. Pollution is terrible for our world. I believe it is wrong to litter the earth. We really need to recycle more in our planet. It is right to pick up garbage and litter and have more recycling, like different bins around the town. One paper and plastic garbage. And, in other, and other recycling bins. Thank you for listening to my speech today. Thank you, Abby. Our next speaker is John Etzel with Corton Elementary. Good morning. My name is John Etzel. I am 10 years old. I am in the fourth grade. I attend Corton Elementary School and this is my optimism speech. Since third grade, I have been going down to the LRC in speech to get my work finished. I have been working on my letter formation, handwriting, vowels, and memory studies. I plan to attend Derby Middle School in two years. I am excited to take art because I would get to use different tools such as a power saw. <laughs> I enjoy building things with my hands. In the future, I hope to attend Purdue. I plan to invent a solar-powered plane. Afterwards, I would like to move to Sanibel Island, Florida. I would like to live there because of the beaches and the hot weather. My house will be on stilts to prevent flooding. I also want my house to have solar panels on the roof to help with electricity costs. And my house needs to be off the ocean. I hope to be home most of the week when I grow up and become an adult. What makes me optimistic? I believe we as humans can slow down or shut down global warming on Earth. All of us on this planet need to do something, even if it's small changes, to slow down greenhouse gases. As an adult, I will drive a Tesla to prevent global warming or climate change, but I also think Teslas are cool cars. <laughs> I want to help reduce the plastic in the ocean it is important to reduce the waste in the ocean. I heard from ocean scientists that near the future, there will be more plastic than fish living in the ocean. I do not, I do not believe in throwing trash out a car window because the trash can accidentally be seen for a fish as 
food. I heard from ocean scientists that near the future that there will be more plastic than fish living in the ocean. I do not believe in throwing trash out a car window. Be oh, never mind. Um, thank you for listening to my activists. Thanks so much. Thank you, Brian. Have a good day. Can Thank you. Thank you, John. Um, our next speaker is William Forberg with Harlan Elementary. Good morning. My name is William Forberg, and I am 10 years old, and I'm in fourth grade. I attend Harlan Elementary School. My two teachers are Mrs. Hassler and Mrs. Israel. At recess, I enjoy playing football with my friends. Some of my other favorite sports are swimming, track, and lacrosse. My favorite pastime is hanging out with my good friends. Overall, I really like going to school at Arlen. My favorite subject is math. My favorite book series I've ever read is The Psy Chronicles by Luna Cromwell. My favorite movie of all time is My All American starring Freddie Steinberg. An interesting fact about me that I was born on January 20th, 2009, the same day as President Obama's inauguration. I enjoy traveling on vacations. One of my favorite vacation memories is going to Pompano Beach in Florida. There were huge waves and we saw family friends on vacation. I've been coming to speech in Holland at pre-K at four years old. I have been doing my vocal nodules because I, I used to scream an extra amount when I was younger. I was also a loud talker. Today I'm still working my voice such as not whispering as much because it's not good for my voice. I hydrate my vocal cords by drinking lots of water during the school day and at home. In my past in speech, I worked on pronouncing the following sounds. F, V, S, W, H, C, H, S, H, J, L, and R. Right now I'm only working on pronouncing words with vocalic R. I believe it is very important to work hard for what you want. I worked very hard in speech over the years. Recently, this past winter, I also worked very hard in swimming. I went to practice two times a week for an hour and a half each practice. I worked on the following strokes, freestyle, butterfly, backstroke, and breaststroke. In the far future, one day my dream is to become a professional football player. I would like to attend college at either Michigan or Michigan State. My career goal is to be a medical doctor that helps with sports-related injuries. I wish to have a big family of three kids and stay and live in Michigan. Someday I would also like to visit Australia. In two years, I plan to go to Derby and afterwards attend Sion. Next year, I will participate in the Lynx program and be a safety in fifth grade. I believe that each person should get equal quality regardless of their race or religion. And I believe that people get sick, for example, getting cancer, it really isn't their fault and they should be treated with health care for free. I also think that you need to get vaccinated when you are very young to prevent from getting sick. Thank you for listening to my speech and inviting me here today. Thank you, Thank you for your our next speaker is Mackenzie Johnson with Greenfield Elementary. What is optimism? Optimism is positivity, happiness, hopefulness, confidence in the future, and having good cheer. What is reality? Reality is accepting a different, accepting a situation for what it is, a fact finder, and also sometimes not looking at the bright side. Is there a difference? Is being optimistic realistic? Does real life have hope, cheer, positivity, and happiness? Yes, real life does have all those things, and no, there's not a difference. One reason is, I made a speech that is a good example of why there is not a difference. And my speech was about how I stuttered. I stutter and I'm not ashamed of it. Realistically, I wouldn't have the guts to stand in front of an audience and speak openly about my stuttering. 
optimistically, I am not ashamed of my stuttering and find it as an opportunity in disguise. Another reason is, I have just started my own baking business, baking treats from muffins to cakes, and realistically, I am not ready to bake like the pros. But optimistically, in the future, I will be competing in the top baking championships. Life is filled with challenges and setbacks, but if you choose to have confidence with yourself and the future, you can overcome anything because if you approach something with happiness, life will be that much easier because you greeted this challenge with a smile. This is my first year at a new school and realistically, I would still have no friends. But optimistically, I collected enough courage to make friends and be the best that I could be. When you ask the question, is there a difference between real reality and optimism? Think about life and its opportunities that you will miss out on if you're realistic versus if you're optimistic. I think that optimism is the way to go because you can limit yourself if you're only realistic. For example, Harriet Tubman. Realistically, Harriet Tubman knew the consequences of rescuing other slaves, but optimistically, she knew that she had to take the risk and be positive. Another example is Barack Obama. He was the first black president of the United States. Realistically, people didn't think that there would be a black president, but optimistically, he stayed strong and became a president. The next example is Martin Luther King Jr. Realistically, people thought that segregation would never end, but optimistically, Martin believed in himself and he helped stop segregation. Another example is Venus and Serena Williams. Realistically, they had to train each day when they were little, two hours a day. And optimistically, they believed that if they trained hard enough, they could become one of the best tennis players of all time. The fifth example is Susan B. Anthony. Realistically, she saw the rights of women and believed that they were unfair. Optimistically, she also saw that she could fix those laws for women. My last example is Alice Coachman. Realistically, when she was little, she worked hard on track, and optimistically, she believed that she could be the first African-American woman to win an Olympic gold medal. So, when there is someone who made a success with their life, think about how they got there. There is a balance of realism and optimism. The person was aware about the reality of the situational goal, but they were also optimistic about the situational goal. Thank you. Thank you, Mackenzie. Our next speaker is Ricky Rockwell with Eden Academy. Good morning. My name is Ricky Rockwell. I am 12 years old. I live in Bloomfield Hills and I go to Eden County. Thank you for inviting me to speak at this year's Birmingham Optimist Club. Before I start, I would like to thank my teachers, Ms. Shathman and Ms. Mackey, for the love and support. Without their encouragement, I would not have made as much progress with my speech over the last four years. I would also like to thank Ms. Poland and Eden County for helping me to be the young man I am today. I am grateful. As others have mentioned, today's topic is about the fine line between right and wrong. In my experience, sometimes the right way is the wrong thing. For example, if your friend is stressed out about making up a math test they missed and they want you to tell them what's on the test, you may want to help them and give them the answers because that feels like the right thing to do as they are your, as they are your friend. But it's not really the right thing to do because it's similar to cheating and everyone needs to show what they've learned on their own. 
Another example is when you have a substitute teacher. Sometimes a sub leaves a note for your regular teacher and mentions that some students in class will act in disruptive and disrespectful while she was absent. While it may seem like while it may seem like the right thing to do would tell your teacher about all the activities that occurred while she was gone. And yes, technically it is the right thing to do. It's not a very good friend skill to be the student who tells anyone when you're when you're in sixth grade. If you are a student if you are the student who tells who was being a troublemaker, the other students may not trust you. As long as no one was in danger or got or getting hurt, it might be better if you tell your teacher in private. I cannot recommend telling her in front of the whole class, as this often creates more problems, especially when you're trying to make friends. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Rachel. Our next speaker is Isaac Silverstein from Eaton Academy. I am Isaac Silverstein from Eaton Academy. Thank you for having me. Many people do not know the difference between tattling and tattling, which is an issue since we are basically them up. Tattling is when we tell the teacher when someone does a small issue just to make them in trouble, such as when someone makes you trip on accident or if they poke you. If this happens, you would be tattling since you are trying to put them in trouble. Tattling is when someone tells the teacher about a bigger issue, such as people making fun of you or something more physical. If this happens, you should tell the teacher since it is more serious and you are not just doing it to make them in trouble, but you actually need help. Tattling should never be done and telling should only happen when you need help or have a problem. One time someone said that I hacked their iPad even though they had no proof this even happened, which made me frustrated since they were trying to get me in trouble and I never even done it. They did this because they wanted someone to feel worse than them. Stuff like this should never affect you since you never did anything. Um, our next speaker is Noah Blocker with Berkshire Middle School. Hi, my name is Noah Blocker. I am 14 years old and I am an 8th grade student at Berkshire Middle School. Berkshire Middle School. This year, this year I was part of Berkshire's basketball, football, and wrestling team. I love being athletics. It teaches me a lot. Teaches me a lot of useful things, like for being an adult, like working hard, being dedicated, and working with other people to improve. Being in sports has also learned has also helped me learn about this year's topics for the speech. I can be optimistic by having good sportsmanship, being hopeful, and having a positive attitude. During a football game, my teammates and I cheer each other on. I, so I play the defensive tackle in the fall. But when I'm upset or angry during, during a game, I use, that, I use that emotion to help me with the next play to tackle someone. But the reality, but the reality is that we don't win every game. Football and sports help us learn that we always don't get to win. We think we are going to win, but it doesn't always happen. When I'm losing during a fo football game, I can try to be more optimistic. I can work harder with my team and have a uh, have positive attitude. I can always look at the bright side of things. After my team lost a few games, we have to come together to try to, try to win the next game. I think that as a team, we learn to be optimistic so we can look forward to the next challenge. So in conclusion, I think that everyone should be optimistic and happy. And I think that when we play with people on teams, work with other students in class, and learn with our teachers, that we can be more optimistic. Although there will be some bumps along the way, but if we always have a positive attitude, we can change our reality. Thank you for listening to my speech, and have a good day.
Our last speaker today is William Brockstein with Groves High School. Good morning. I am William Brockstein. Being positive is real. Balance. It is something that I work for in school and home. Not because too much of anything is bad, but because we all have things to do in our lives. How we do those things is important. When we start our days being positive, it helps make it a good day. It feels like riding on a bicycle on the first hot day of the year. It feels like spending the day at the pool with your best friend. Being positive is, is a tool for everything that we do. If we do not have a positive attitude, we could not face the challenge that life may give us. Being a positive has taught me to respect my teachers, family, and friends. Being positive has taught me to set a goal for myself during my senior year. Being positive has taught me that I am ready for next year. Being positive has taught me that I can do things like being here today to share my speech. Thank you for listening to my speech. Thank you. Well, that was wonderful, and I'd just like to take time again to applaud all the students. Great job. So as I call your name, we have a certificate and medal for, for each of you. So when I call you, I'll have you stand up here, and then there'll be some photo moments if anybody wants to do that. And then just after that, we'll have some short comments from our president of uh, Birmingham Optimist Club, Bill McConnell, and um, that conclude the morning. So we'll go ahead and get started right now. So the first person I'd like to call is Sonia Baldwin, Beverly Elementary. Next um, is Mariana Nunchi from um, Bingham Farms. Gatch with West Maple. Next, um, Abby Glazier with Courtin Elementary. John Essel with Gordon Elementary. <laughs> William Borberg with Harlan Elementary. Kenzie Johnson with Greenfield Elementary. Congratulations. 
Ricky Rockwell with Eaton Academy. Isaac Silverstein from Eaton Academy. Noah Blocker, Berkshire Middle School. William Broxstein from Groves High School. And in closing, our president, Birmingham Optimist Club, Bill McConnell, has a few words and will lead us in the Optimist Creed. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Bill. On behalf of the Birmingham Optimist Club, I want to thank and congratulate today's students on an outstanding performance. You know, the fine line between optimism and reality. This morning, I, had opt I was optimistic that we'd have a great or good program. The reality is we had an outstanding, a great program. So again, thanks again to all the young men and women who have performed today. I also want to thank all the parents, family, friends, and educators for making this event possible. I also want to thank the Birmingham Community House and their staff for um, hosting today's event. A special thank goes out to Rose Fallberg, our chairperson for this event. This is your, what, 28th year? doing this event, that's amazing. You know, the motto for the Optimist Club is Friend of Youth. That's the International Optimist Club, which we are a member, Friend of Youth. The Op our Optimist Club, the Birmingham Club, was founded in 1960 and is comprised of service-oriented individuals from our community. The events that we sponsor or co-sponsor include the oratoricals, essay contest, a career day at Seaholm High School, which includes over 200 juniors and over 80 mentors. Our Youth and Service Breakfast, we co-sponsor with the Birmingham Youth Assistance Organization, where we recognize students that have gone above and beyond. A junior golf tournament, junior tennis tournament, a Respect for Law Award is given to officers that support the youth in our community. We support the Childhood Cancer Campaign, and we do support a Seaholm Junior Optimist Club. Our club meets three Wednesdays a month here at the Community House and one evening a month at Shields Restaurant in Troy. Our meeting consists of um, brief news and information about our club, a buffet breakfast or a buffet pizza at Shields, and a guest speaker. If you have an interest in supporting the youth in our community, please take the time to visit our website, which is Beham Optimist, B H A M Optimist dot com. Pick up information at the table set outside by the registration table or call the community house. On the back of today's program is the Optimist Creed. This is the creed which we recite at the conclusion of our weekly meetings. Will everyone please stand and join us in the creed? Promise yourself 
to be so strong that nothing can disturb your peace of mind, to talk health, happiness, and prosperity to every person you meet, to make all of your friends feel that there is something in them, to look at the sunny side of everything and make your optimism come true, to think only the best, to work only for the best, and to expect only the best to be just as enthusiastic about the success of others as you are about your own, to forget the mistakes of the past and press on to the greater achievements of the future, to wear a cheerful countenance at all times and to give every creature you do to smile, to give so much time for the improvement of yourself that you have no time to criticize others, to be too large for worry, too noble for anger, too strong for fear, and too happy to permit the presence of trouble. Thank you for being here today, folks. Have a good day.